Welcome to the session on partition join operation in parallel databases. It is one of the uh, interoperation technique. Talking about the learning outcome of this session, at the end of this session, you will be able to apply this partition join operation on a given relation. Now, interoperation parallelism. What is this interoperation parallelism? In this one, usually for the parallel databases, every individual operation in a query is parallelized. Okay? Whatever the operations are there, say for example, the operation may be sorting, the operation may be searching, join, whatever, a single operation is now taken for parallelism. So that operation is parallelized, that is called as interoperation parallelism. So in this one, uh, uh, basically for the operations like parallel sorting technique is there, parallel join techniques are there. Uh, so for parallel uh, sort, uh, we have uh, already uh, videos are there, you can refer those videos. Today, we will be studying this partition join operation, which is one of the parallel join technique. Let us go ahead for this par partition parallel join. Now. This parallel join, basically what the join operation is doing. Now for the join operation, uh, basically if uh, more than uh, one relation are there, even self join is also there, uh, the pairs of tuples are tested, uh, one to one tuples are tested and if a particular condition they satisfy, then that pair is added to the output. So let us go ahead for the uh, parallel join operation, that is a par partition parallel join operation. Basically, it has the three steps you can say. Uh, first one is partitioning, where we are splitting the pairs, whatever we want to do the operation, those pairs we are splitting okay, uh, for multiple processes. So that is called as a partitioning. First, we are doing the partitioning. Second, we are going for the actual parallel process that is now uh, we are doing the operation, a join operation. So every processor parallelly computes the join locally because already the data they have according to the partitions. And finally, once the parallel join operation in all the uh, processors parallelly has done, then uh, the result is collected at each processor at one of the place. So that is the third step. Now this par partition join operation is basically for equijoins and natural joins. Uh, equijoins, it is possible that the partitions have two input relations across the processors and compute the join locally at each processor. That is, uh, every processor has uh, uh, partitions, uh, say consider that uh, more than one relations are there. So if two relations are there, then uh, those are partitioned into processors and locally every processor is doing the join operation. Uh, let us say, uh, consider that there are two input relations, uh, say here, uh, th the relation R and the relation S and those are we are joining on the attributes A of uh, relation R and B of relation S. Okay, so and uh, now the relation R and S each are now partitioned into uh, say some n partitions are there, we have n disks. So we have n partitions, so the partitions are denoted by 0 to n minus 1. So you may say that the relation R0, R1, Rn minus 1 are partitioned on across n processors. Similarly, the relation S is partitioned as S0, S1, Sn minus 1 across the n processors. So now every processor has one partition of R and another partition of S which is uh, locally it is going to take the join operation. So the same thing here. Now, what we can do for the partitioning is we can either use range partitioning or we can use hash partitioning. Uh, these are the partitioning techniques. Basically, there are three partitioning techniques we have seen that round robin partitioning, range partitioning, hash partitioning. So either we can use range partitioning or we can use hash partitioning here for uh, taking the partitions. So uh, the join attribute, now how to uh, take the partition? The partition should be specifically on the join attributes. So what are the join attributes we have seen here? That the join attribute for relation R is attribute A and the join attribute for relation S is B. So based on R should be partitioned by A attribute and B sh uh, S should be partitioned by B attribute because based on this only we are taking the join operation. So what is the scenario now? That partition RI that is relation 
uh, R is partition, say R i is one of the partition of relation R and S i is one of the partition of relation S, then this R i and S i we are sending to processor P i. Now, processor P i locally is computing the join operation based on this. So, partition R i joins with partition S i on the attribute of A of R i with B of S i. Okay? And any of the standard join operation we can apply here. So, this is the scenario you can see that diagrammatically I have represented here. Uh, so, this is our join operation which parallelly is uh, going across these many processors. So, processor P0, processor 0, processor 1, processor N minus 1. So, the partitions are what 0 partition, uh, 1 partition, N minus 1 partition, these are the disks D0 to Dn, Dn minus 1 you can say. Now, relation R and S are there. So, relation R is partitioned as R0, R1, Rn minus 1 across these N disks. Similarly, relation S is partitioned uh, as S0, S1 across these n processors till S, Sn minus 1. Now, what every partition will do now? Every processor, say processor P0, it is locally doing the join operation of R0 joins with S0. Similarly, processor P1 is doing the join operation of R1 joins with S1. Processor n minus 1, that is Rn minus 1 joins with Sn minus 1. So, parallelly every processor is doing the join operation that is what the parallel partition partition join operation is okay this is another uh, diagram depiction you can see here that uh, relation r is there and these are partitioned as r0 r1 till rn minus 1 similarly relation s is here that is partitioned as s0 s1 s2 till sn minus 1 you can say so now what processor p0 is doing it is doing the join operation of r0 s0 similarly p1 r1 s1 like this, so the parallelly these are executing. Consider the example here. Uh, this is our example like uh, uh, we have two relations, student and courses. You can see the attributes are there. We want to take the join operation between these one. Okay. So, the scenario is like this. We have two relations, student and courses. The joining attribute we are taking here is roll number. So, based on roll number, we want to do the join operation. Con number of disk we are considering for example as 2 and uh, therefore, the number of partitions are also 2. So, therefore, the partitions, uh, the processors are also 2 you can say. Now, the partitioning technique we are applying here is hash partitioning technique. Partitioning attribute is roll number. Uh, so, uh, as it is hash partitioning technique, we are taking the uh, hash function like this h of roll number. Uh, so, that is mod n and what is our n? n is our 2. So, uh, roll number mod 2, whatever the result will come that hash value disk that is containing that tuple. Okay? So, we are applying the hash partitioning on student as well as on courses, both the tables. Let us see now. So, this is uh, the partitioning what we have done. Uh, we may say that uh, this is the partition 0 uh, for the processor P0. Okay? So, uh, partition that is the student relation is partitioned as student 0 and courses relation is partitioned as courses 0. In So, this all thing will go to disk 0 and the processor P0 is working on this one. Okay? So, the number of partitions and the partitioning technique we have applied is hash partitioning here. Uh, so, you can see this is partition 0. Now, what I would say is pause this video and think of the second partition. Can you show the partition 1 of student and courses relations? We have this uh, table and we want to do the partition 1 on this one based on the hash value hash function mod 2. Take a minute and do this one. Let us see. So, this is partition 1. Okay? So, here this will go to disk 1 uh, which will be parallelly operated on processor P1. So, what the processor P1 will do? It will do the uh, join operation of partition 1 of student 1 with courses 1. Okay? So, that is what the parallel par partitioning is. So, you can see here that processor P0 is doing this party. This is partition 0 of student and this is partition 0 of courses. Similarly, this is partition 1 of uh, student and this is partition 1 of courses. So, parallelly both the uh, processors are doing their join operation and finally, you can see this is the result of the join operation whatever we have seen earlier. Okay? According to the example, this is our result. 
you can just go through the result but now what we have done here that parallelly we have done the join operation on processor p0 and processor p1 these are my references thank you